We're live. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us again for the second day in a row after yesterday's uh, live stream with Matthew Hagan, which I, we thought went really well. And there was a lot of valuable. Um, yeah, I saw that. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah, a lot of inf valuable information, I think, for people to hear right now. So I'm thrilled um, for you to be talking with you, Thomas. So why don't we start okay. with Thomas Hutchings. Why don't you give us a brief introduction? I'm a, my name's Thomas Hutchings. I'm a saxophonist. I have a few different businesses. Like uh, I have a podcast. I have, uh, I teach saxophone. I'm a professional saxophonist playing saxophone. And then also I have a company called Artists Without Labels where I distribute music and help artists out that um, need to do work on things like their their marketing materials, you know, like press kits and electronic uh, press kits and uh, press releases, things like that. So that's uh, some of the stuff I do. And then just, you know, just trying to be a good person in general. Nice. Yeah. And you and I just recently partnered to launch The Revival. True that. That was last month, actually, almost exactly a month ago. Yeah, thank God we got it out before yeah, all yeah, the events went in there. shut down. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the universe tells you, uh, you know, to put things on pause and maybe like reframe. So exactly. that's what we're going to do. But I thought it was really good because we were focused on building a community within the arts to share yeah. resources, um, which is what you do with Artists Without Labels. Yeah, all the time, helping people finish projects and get them out into the world. You know, whether it's my own distribution or their own distribution, just helping them figure out ways to meet the needs of the people they're, they're making the music for. Cool. Nice. Nice. So today we're going to talk about, along the same vein, actually, which is totally on brand for you, <laughs> you had suggested um, talking about potential resources that are out there. So do you want, do you want yeah. to talk into that or do you want to talk about first a little bit about how this is affecting you? Personally. Let's start with that. I yeah. think everyone's going to be in the same boat. I had about four saxophone students, lost all of them, and um, they're, you know, they're not going to be taking lessons online only because two of them. It's pretty funny. It's split fifty-fifty. Two of them are kids that uh, their parents are like, "Ah, eh, we don't need to do the lessons. He's not even in school right now." And two of them are adults, and they lost their income, so they're not going to be continuing mm -hmm. to pay for their lessons. So. Uh, I've gone to look for resources online to teach uh, saxophone online to people, and I've found a few different cool little things. Uh, there's some, there's some teachers, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, there were just some teachers in South Dakota that that uh, made a they made a really cool hot sheet that shows you. It's a PDF that shows you exactly what you need to teach online as a musician. So that's a great resource. Oh, that is a great resource. Can you um, shoot us that link in the chat? Yeah, yeah, I'll shoot you that link. That would be great. Um, have you thought about, I've noticed a lot of people slashing prices as a way to encourage um, people. Have you thought about that at all? Oh yeah, totally. Absolutely. And have um, you, are you like, what kind of discounts are you offering? Um, well, I'm, I'm just basically at the barter level right now because mm -hmm. for people that don't have any income, it's really difficult to charge them anything, but more, more recently, um, just recently, I put up that I was looking for some kind of work, um, and I did a Facebook Live, and I just played saxophone to some YouTube play-alongs, and just nailed up in the comments my Venmo, and just said, "Hey, if you have, if you have the time to listen, and you have any, you know, if you want to tip me, tip me. If not, and I got a few tips here and there, but yeah. as a result of that, people uh, asked me if they're." if they had kids that played saxophone, like some of my friends and some of their friends asked me if I wanted to teach lessons online. And so that's been coming up uh, just from doing that, which has been great, you know, as a way to find some work and a little bit of income. So that is great. And so just for context too, now you've been surviving off of an income primarily from music for how many yeah. years? Uh, um, I had a day gig, was a full-time job working for a technology company. And that was up until 2016. So after oh, 2016, okay. we're talking like uh, we're four years in now. So it's been uh, it's been a lot of trials and tribulations, but really I'm doing what I love. So the sacrifices may be the stability, which I think everything that everyone's going through right now is a testament to that. But uh, also it's, you know, 
ev- I think everyone that's ever had a day job that they didn't want that they had something that they'd rather be doing, if they have the opportunity to do that thing, that they would do it. So that's the leap of faith that I took in myself. And, and it's been working. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been great. Things have just gotten better and better. It's something where you, when you start doing it, um, it, it's it's a struggle to get things going, but once they do, once word of mouth gets out, if you're reliable, if you're consistent, if you're good at what you do, um, if you're personable, then people, of course, are going to continue to call you and keep you in the loop whenever they need whatever your services are. So that's really important when you're doing something that's a uh, something that's a, a service that's also that that requires you to deal with a lot of different people in a lot of different situations, which is exactly what musicians do every day. Yeah, yeah. And how do you find, how have you found your clients traditionally? Um, most of them are, well, first, how I get my clients is usually um, through finding them either, they find me, and, and that's usually a case of they just, someone suggested them to me, and that's for like most of the recordings I do. And some of the production stuff, I have conversations with different musicians, different artists, and we talk about uh, some of the struggles and little some of the hurdles they're trying to overcome. And then uh, that kind of sort of turns into a conversation about what how I can maybe help them. So for the most part, it's, it's, it's people that are, have projects that are unfinished or that are doing things where they've done the same thing over and over again without results. And we're trying to figure out other ways to maybe um, break the mold, I guess, so to speak, and make, make, make a new, create a new path for them so that they have like, not necessarily a, a different journey, but just like a different option along their journey so that they can keep their vision, but just have different ways of like maybe finding new audiences and things like that. Or, Hashtag another way. Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice. I love it. I love it. And you talked about, um, you know, the kind of the, un- the instability of doing your music full time. And, and I think that's something that a lot of artists are familiar with and in some ways gives us a leg up in this crisis because it's like everybody's now unstable. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah, welcome to our lives. Now, usually we're not like stuck at home. <laughs> Excuse me, but right? Do you do you find that you're it's less jarring for you as it is for other people? Um, I don't think it's any less jarring uh, uh, unless you unless you had some money saved up. I have a little money saved up. I don't have a lot, but um, I can get through maybe April and then it's going to start to get a little scary, but right. I have a feeling there are going to be some some uh, regu- some regulations or maybe some, there's going to be some stuff put into place that's going to help people ease some of the financial burden that's going to be, be coming up in the next 30 days. So right now I think people are fine. I think if, if there was a temperature check, uh, uh, when this all started, people started to calm down since the freak out has, I think, uh, I think we talked a little earlier that it started for me about a week ago. And then that first weekend of this, uh, there wasn't a lot of um, talk about having to hunker down or any of the sheltering in place. So that that's affected people psychologically, I think a little more with the social distancing. So, um, you know, artists are tend to be, um, tend to be a little more introverted and, and used to working on their own anyway. So I don't think it impacts them so much, but for musicians that do collaborate a lot, like I do a lot of collaboration online and off, um, have my own band. So in that sense, going out and playing, which was a source of income is sort of, you know, that's that's a pain point for everyone that does it, you know, all the way uh, across the board from people touring down to someone singing, uh, you know, uh, busking at the, on the subway street, a street corner or something, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And so you and you talked about how the way you find a lot of your clients is really through networking, through talking yeah. to people. And so yeah. now that you can't, I mean, that happens usually at events. And since all events um, are now canceled and not happening, how are you going about maintaining uh, connections and relationships or, you know, communications? Um, well, I did do a Facebook Live, which I think is probably what everyone's going to start doing now. Mm. Uh, there's there's less there's less resistance. There's no there's no uh, follower limit. Like on I think on YouTube you have to have uh, to do to do live 
videos, you have to have a certain number of subscribers. So uh, there's a bit of a there's a there's a bit of like a hurdle you have to jump or a hoop you have to jump there. And on Facebook, you literally just go live and put up a comment with your Venmo, like I did. And um, I'm thinking of what I'll be doing. Uh, just an idea of my own. What I'm going to try to do is. I'm going to put all of my CDs for sale on Bandcamp, and you're giving away your, you're giving up your CDs. Yeah. Well, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like sell autographed copies of them to people that want them. You know. Oh, these are the ones that you have your own music. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, my own, my own music that I've recorded. I've got about four, maybe five of them. So nice. And, uh, oh, you know, nice. I want to be able to give something in return if they. Um, if they tip me. So I think that's that's one option people can which, which also by the way is like the Patreon model. Yeah. Patreon though you have to get people to join. And I think it's a lot easier to 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 like just eliminate that sense that someone has to like subscribe yeah. to you. Especially right now when you're just trying to do something quick and easy. And uh, it's a little, it's a, it's very formal. It's very formalized, you know, like it has a thank you message, uh, it, which is great, which is great. But uh, I think right now people are probably gonna be doing their Facebook live, which means that it's gonna be mostly their circle of people that have been supporting them already, you know, uh, that have seen them and kind of already know their story. But Patreon's good. I do have a Patreon, but um, I haven't been, I haven't been really pursuing it only because I didn't have to, but now, of course, like everyone else, I'm trying to find other ways to go online and uh, make income. So one of the things, yeah. one of the things that I'm suggesting to people is just to get your your online presence up and up and ready to go, so people can find you. I'm sure there are people that want to support you. Um, there are artists out there that don't have an online presence, but if they had one and they were asking for help and they were letting people know that they give them some entertainment in return, they would get the help that they needed. Like if they needed the money or if they needed you know, supplies or whatever to get money, which they would need money for to get some of the artistic, you know, projects that they want to finish or that they want to start completed. It's no different than it was before, except we have to do it online. So. Right. Absolutely. I think, and I think long-term, actually, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, long-term, this is changing the way that people are going to pursue their career. So in music, it's all about the tour right now, right? It used to be, or it was, up until now, tours uh, are not, the, now all the tours have been canceled, obviously, you know, and people like, um, what's his name? Uh, well, a lot of the older musicians that are like, oh, I forgot who it was, but there's a lot of older musicians who are, are dependent, oh, like the Rolling Stones, I think is one of them, I think they're doing it. Some of them are starting to do these live streams themselves because they're dependent, maybe not the Rolling Stones, but a lot of the people currently on tour are dependent on that income from their tour. You know, and what we've been telling, we tell artists a lot of times is that you got to get your following so that you can go on tour because all the money in the music industry is made from concerts. Yeah, I say that too a lot. Right. And it's all turning on its head. I mean, it's not, you can't tour anymore and you got to build a following another way. Yeah, literally. You literally cannot tour like it's physically impossible. Mm -hmm. not even, there's not even a place to tour to unless, well, I mean, there's, there, this is why people are doing like virtual, yeah. virtual gigs now. So, I mean, it's all going to come back to this virtual thing. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why I agree with you. I think people need to get on board with that. Um, because if this lasts, you know, now they're saying like 18 months, yeah, you know, or even to the end of the year, this is changing the industry. So the exciting part of that is that there's an opportunity here for people to come out with these new models to really test drive it. And the music industry is no stranger to that. True. You know, that's what people have been doing for the last ever since the the labels had their great fall, if you will, or you know, <laughs> started. Well, it was off. disrupted by digital music, which should have been assigned to everyone that they should have gone straight to like some kind of digital platform. Yeah. Totally. Um, totally. There are a lot of models that I think would work for, like technologically, models that would work for what musicians are trying to do right now. Um, there's not a platform where you can go to where there, I mean, there's YouTube, but it's not quite set up the same way because it doesn't have a tip platform where people can come and watch you and even for just one song and, and be like, oh, I'll just, I'll, you know what, I'm going to send this guy a couple of bucks. I like that mm -hmm. song. 
you know, there's not a platform like that outside of, unfortunately, porn. But um, th that model. Well, you can borrow those models, though. Then. Yeah, that model that, that they have there, I think, would work really well for performers that are doing something that's like, like music or even dance, even, you know. Yeah. The, the, it's it's like I know it's like maybe taboo, but the technology that's being used is exactly what you could use to have. You could have thousands of artists on a website where you could click on and preview each. And if if it was something you were into, you liked the music, you could tip them. You know, I mean, it's it's it, there's nothing that centralizes that. You know, for artists, so that I think would be a huge breakthrough for, for artists. I mean, YouTube is the closest thing. Twitch comes a little bit closer. I think we're gonna see a lot more of Twitch yeah. coming up. Yeah. I think Twitch I, is probably gonna be blowing up, you know. Yeah, and traditionally in my mind, at least I discovered it through the gaming industry. So, yeah. uh, but I think that that is a, a platform that already exists. But also let this be a call to anyone who catches this, who wants to build a platform, as you're discussing, specifically for the music industry. Yeah, exactly. In the meantime, we can use Twitch and you know some of those other things, which I would encourage people to do anyways. But Facebook is the easiest if you don't already have a, a YouTube account. And a lot of musicians, a lot of musicians spend a lot of time perfecting what they sound like or perfecting the music uh, before it goes out. And this is the opposite of that. This is being human live in front of people, interacting with them, engaging with them, just like you're in a bar, just like you're in a club. So right. it uses those same tools. So if you're good at that, if you're good at engaging with people, why not do it online? You know, uh, you don't see their faces, you know, but you see their names and you see their comments, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so good because it's also encouraging um, authentic. You got to be, there's part of the problem I think people have with technology is they don't think it's it's authentic, right? We talked about that with Matthew yesterday, where he was like, people don't say social media is not authentic because people are not being authentic on it. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can, I love the idea of just like setting up a jam or something and streaming, yeah. it, you know, and it's it's like the new normal, I think. I mean, people have been fighting that for a long time, but now it's like, we can't fight it anymore. This is our only way to connect. And yeah. again, we have to look at it as opportunity. And you know, and I love the idea. And you can you just post your link for Venmo. It's a brilliant way to tip. It's easy. Yeah, or PayPal. Anything you have. There are so many um, resources and sites now that give you a way to receive some kind of a tip for a service you provide, uh, whether it's entertainment or um, there's a there's actually a really cool website called Kofi. It's K O dash F I. And it's a way for you to get $3 tips and tell people, uh, basically ask people to buy you a coffee for something that you've done. Um, it's, um, spell it again. It's K-O yeah. dash F-I. F-I, Kofi.com. Yeah. Okay. There. I probably, it probably, probably coffee because uh, I, where I got the idea was from, from was there's a 17 year old kid that, did an aggregate website of all of the uh, coronavirus stats and he's using it. And, you know, of course people are tipping him more than $3, but he's getting, you know, he's, he's getting in return for making that website without even asking for it, you know, income. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. If yeah. you can find ways to give people opportunities that this is this where the word opportunity is come, comes in more importantly. It's not that the opportunity is for you it's for your audience, uh, 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 like an opportunity mm. for them to show their appreciation. So for them to do that, you have to give them a, a way to do it. And there are a lot of ways to do that. And I think Venmo is one, Cash App is one, um, Coffee, the site we just talked about, uh, PayPal, you know, and anything else. I guess if you use Zelle, um, yeah. you know, I think it's affiliated with Chase Bank, you can use that. So any, any of one of those forms that, or, or, or I guess uh, options that you give to your followers, your audience, uh, to uh, give you any kind of uh, tip or feedback via, like but basically we're talking about financial feedback at this point. Like yeah. if, if they like what you're doing, here's a little, you know, here's a few bucks. 
uh, and because we're connected to the entire world, you're, you're basically, you know, have millions of people as possible uh, fans or followers. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, so tell, me, you know. tell me about some of these other resources you've discovered. Uh, well, that first one was coffee. Um, a lot of these I didn't I didn't know about until I started playing on cruise ships because on cruise ships you're never in the same place or you're outside the United States. So sometimes you can't use resources that you would use within the United States. So uh, the big ones outside the U.S. Um, were the ones that I, I find were the most popular were Cash App, um, uh, PayPal, of course, is huge everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, you mentioned all the the cash exchange resources. But what about the ones that you said you did a bunch of research on? Oh, uh, for web resources for financial help. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I have a I have a link to that. I'm going to share it. Great. This is just a yeah. link for now. Um, and I know, some of these things are lists of places where people can go and. And, and and just go through the list and apply for financial help that they might need. Some of it's for medical financial help, some of it's for lost wages, uh, some of it's for paying bills, some of it's grants. You just have to go through and then apply to what apply for whatever applies to you. And then you're you'll you're you're gonna be on a waiting list with probably millions or thousands of people. So okay. no, I know everybody's applying for them right now, but that's why it's good to kind of hear about it, you know, yeah later. Um, I posted a couple on my company page. Mm -hmm. Do you have a place where you're posting these? I'm going to put them on my Artists Without Labels page um, in the notes section once I finish. Oh, that's a great idea. And that's your that's on your Facebook page? That's on Facebook, yeah. That's my Facebook page. And I might put a link to it on my website somewhere. I'm still I'm still working on that. So, But I have all the time in the world to do it. So that, that'll happen at some point, and it'll be out there. I posted it on Facebook. Um, there are a lot of lists, so I'm, I'm doing what's kind of like an aggregation of lists um, and then also individual websites. So there's a lot of really great, very, very robust lists of resources from all around the world in the United States and specifically in New York, and I'm just compiling them. Okay, great. Um, yeah, that's really, really helpful. Have you applied for any yet? I've applied for the jazz, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called. It's called Jazz something. I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, but I applied for the Jazz one. Um, okay. Yeah, is that the one? That and I'm on a waiting list. You know, I'm on a waiting right. list. Right. Somebody also sent me um, a link. It was some personal, like it was a, it was not a big corporation or a nonprofit. It was just somebody who was creating a list of trying to connect people who can afford it to people who can't afford it, artists specifically. <laughs> People who have something to exchange, and it was a Google Doc. That's cool. Yeah, um, I don't know how Google legit Doc. it was because it was through a third party that I heard about it, and I don't know who the person is. But there is, I mean, it's definitely worth. Actually, I think social right now is the place to be because people are are blasting these kind of links for aid. Oh yeah. You know? And it, obviously, the bigger ones, the nonprofits. Um, I think I sent you one that was like through the Grammy organization. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you sent me that one. I haven't, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't looked at it yet, but I mean, all, all of them are going to be useful to someone somewhere. So yeah, absolutely. There is so, and it's good just for people to know that there are resources. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, there are a lot of people that are, that are going to be struggling over the next thirty to sixty days, probably from just the loss of income for the past week or two. Yeah, exactly. Their income's already been cut in half, like most most people that only make their income when they're outperforming or teaching. So this right. is, these resources are going to come in handy. They'll be able to hopefully in a few weeks or, or maybe sooner see some kind of financial relief if, yeah. if you know, things pan out the way they're, they're supposed to with the leveling off of, the, of this virus. Here's another one I just posted. This one I just discovered this morning. It's through Billboard, um, a state-by-state -state resource guide for music professionals who need help during the virus. And so, you know, there's a lot of uh, this. This kind of accumulates all the nonprofits that are offering aid. So that's good. I mean, and that's it's an opportunity for them to really step up right now too. Yeah. Um, so that's good. So uh, what are your? Oh well, and also they're talking about um, the government giving some kind of stimulus package, like 
two thousand dollars. I think that's the last. Yeah, of this I we'll see what we'll see what happens. It looks it looks like something probably will be based on on income and uh, yeah. you know whatever your tax whatever your taxable income was in the past. It'll be based on like some some time range, whatever they decide, but it'll be some relief for people that don't have any income right, like right now, so. Yeah, I also, you know, I've been saying a lot, I think all these systems are gonna crumble, but the economic systems are all gonna crumble. So, you know, like my parents yeah. are worried about, um, you know, like social security or unemployment, you know, my mom's gonna have to go on unemployment and she's worried about it running out. And I'm like, that whole system is gonna undergo a huge change, I think. I don't think there's gonna be such thing as running out of you know because the government is going to have to i think that's part of the government stimulus is to is to fund these systems even though it's it's very much against the republican way you know they seem to actually be making an effort to change and to and to aid it so uh, well, for my own anxieties i'm trying to tell myself to just wait and see how it pans out and to because it's really hard to plan right now because i oh, yeah. think all these systems are going to change True, true. I think what your your best bet is to wait and see what the requirements are for some of these things and what the outcomes are going to be for people. You know, like I think the first hurdle will probably just be to get past the virus part of this, and then the rest of it will just be sort of figuring out who gets what. I don't think it's a matter of the 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 resources not being there; it's just being able to get them to the right people that actually need them. So, and I don't know if there are a lot of exact ways to do that because the systems you've had in place in the past weren't very great at it. So um, I think if we start relying more on actual science and data analysis to do these things and, and spending less time being emotional about it, yes. looking at actual numbers and facts and, you know, distributing things to people that actually need it, you know, anecdotal evidence is okay, but, you know, factual evidence is always, you know, data, data wins if you do this right. Yeah, and and this is where technology is our friend. Being tracked, you know, finances are with something that everyone tracks all the time. You know, there's bank accounts, there's there's uh, tax documents and stuff like that. So, with that kind of information, we should be able to easily figure out, you know, what everyone. We should be able to figure figure out like what a, what the basic necessity for everyone is financially and sort that out. I mean, if we can come up with a trillion dollar plan this easily. Uh, just, you know, you know, and it took this kind of, this kind of a sort of a global panic and, and, and crisis to make it happen, then why didn't we do it before? Well, you know, word, word. Worst, that's, that's, that one of the worst things is that we never really had a public health uh, program like the, that was like useful. And we're seeing the effects of that, you know, like, and everyone that I know, uh, you know, relies on, you know, either like, um, uh, Medicaid or a version of ACA of, of the, uh, you know, the Healthcare Act mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do their, their, their medical care. So, and that was okay. You know, it was mediocre at best. It was mediocre care. Right, right. Well, and also that's why when I'm looking at these resources, I actually really like the independent resources that are coming out, you know, versus the big, the big ones, the corporation ones. I mean, for fear of sounding, you know, conspiracy theory, though, I think this is the time where we really do need to be connecting with each other. Um, yeah. Community is more important than ever. I think together we can collectively be creating our own systems. We can, re we know um, amongst each other, at least as far as artists go, we understand the struggle. We understand how things, you know, and, and if, the government who's coming up with these packages don't, you know, mm -hmm. it's very far removed from it. So, you know, it'll help and it'll be something there and that's good. But I, I think we now more than ever, we need to really start depending on each other. Yeah. Yeah. The reality of it is there's going to be a lot of people that need help and there's a lot of resources that just need to be managed properly so that they can get it. Exactly. Cool. It's all about managing the resources and, you know, this all applies to, individuals you know like manage your resources find ways to make the most of what you have yeah absolutely all right so final word well first let me give my final words and then we'll, we'll close out with yours okay. so all right, cool. my final words as always is a reminder that even with all of this advice we're kind of giving out and talking about and the resources available just remember that there is always going to be another way there is no one way 
there's always a way. And, and so I encourage you all to find a way that works for you. Um, all right, Thomas, your last words. My last words are to continue to endeavor to create and to put a positive message out into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you were doing, just find a way to do it online. Uh, there are a lot of resources. And if you can't think of stuff, reach out to me. Go to um, my website. It's www.thomashutchings.com and email me or find me on Facebook or Twitter and message me or LinkedIn and message me. And maybe we can figure out some some way to, to, to help you get to the point where you have this stuff online. It's not as difficult as you think it is once you start doing it. And the more you do it, the better you get at it, just like anything else. And if you're an artist, that's what you spend your whole life doing anyway. So that's my final word. Absolutely. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Thomas. We'll talk to you guys later. Right, take care. Stay healthy. Yes, you too.